Hello, slow comp. Let's talk about slows in growth. I'm Peter Van Orden. I'm the senior director of growth at slim.ai. We are a series A startup focused on helping developers build and secure their cloud native applications. Since being launched in January of 2021, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth across our platforms, including open source, our SaaS, our community, and many other areas. And we wanted new ways of thinking about growth. Of course, I'm talking about slows. So first of all, what is growth? Growth is a hybrid function that sits in between product and marketing and is really focused on, like SRE, developing user journeys that end in user delight and value. As we're fond of saying in growth, loops, not funnels. You might be tr familiar with traditional marketing funnels that move users from one stage to the next. And in growth, we really wanna look at virtuous cycles that lead from new users to engaged users to happy customers and back to new users. We really look at acquisition, retention and engagement, and monetization. In this talk, we'll focus on the first two buckets. If you're curious to learn more about growth, highly recommend Reforge, an online learning community where you'll find great content and tutorials, as well as really amazing growth practitioners. So what do we measure in growth? Well, of course, we're gonna measure new users, but that tends to be more of an output metric of doing other things well. Retention curves allow us, or engagement curves, allow us to see how users are engaging with the platform over time and give us a great indication of product market fit, especially in an early stage company. If users are using your features longer, long term, it means really good things for your company. They'll come back, they'll invite their friends. Finally, we think about habit loops. Are we creating enough value for users that they want to continue to use us the next time they have a need for our product? So in the case of Slim AI, that has to do with analyzing your containers and coming to us when you have a new container project that you're kicking off. So how do we translate this into to a slow framework? Well, for the most part, growth is communicated via OKRs. These are objectives and key results. We'll work with our cross-functional partners on a yearly or quarterly basis to say, here's what we think we can do given the resources that we have. OKRs have a lot of great advantages. They're cross-functional by nature. They can be used by any different division, and they're a shared language that a lot of people are familiar with. But they do have some major drawbacks, especially at an early stage company working on growth. They tend to have long lead times in terms of when you get feedback, and reviewing things on a quarterly or annual basis isn't good enough for the type of flexibility you need to grow a company. A lot's been written about mapping slows to growth, so I won't go into it in too deep a depth here, but I'll give one hot take for the marketing and growth people out there, which is, in a slow concept, a good way of thinking about your marketing budget is, is as an error budget. So if you have the world's best product that just sells itself, you never really have to spend any money on it, right? You've got word of mouth happening, people are telling their friends, and the product's just growing on its own. Now that almost never happens and you will eventually need to spend money to accelerate in certain areas or make up for gaps when things aren't going, when campaigns don't go quite as planned. I'll get more into that in our real world example. So let's put it into action. Before I do that, I wanna kind of debunk this myth of the hockey stick chart. Now these do exist in the wild, we all have them, but hockey stick charts can be more of a vanity metric than something that's really actionable. It's a really great feeling to know that users are resonating, say, with our open source project here, Docker Slim, but this isn't really that useful outside of the context of a year-end report. Day-to-day -day growth is a lot messier. It's unpredictable, it's stochastic, you have really high highs and really low lows. As I like to say, there are days when Kelsey Hightower tweets about you, and there are days when you accidentally break your own website. So what do we want as a growth team? Well, what we want is a steady stream of new users. As I mentioned, growth is a mindset and it's a learning mindset. We wanna learn from users continuously. And by getting a steady stream of new users in the door, we expand our use cases, 
We learn about corner cases that we might not have known about, and we can fix bugs that are getting in the way of a delightful user journey. So let's go back to that user growth chart that we were looking at before. If we split this into thirds, we can say, OK, here's a sweet spot in the middle. This is going to get us to those OKRs that we've communicated to our leadership. And it's going to help us learn what we need to learn from users. If we're running hot and we have spikes in users that are really good, that look really good for us, we want to look at engagement. You know, in the case of getting a developer to tweet about you and share how they're using your product, that's really good. Their friends are going to come in and probably use the product in the same way, and engagement will be high. But let's think about something like a T-shirt giveaway. Now, if we're just giving away our Cody T-shirts here. You know, are users really coming in because they find value in the product or are they come in because they want a free t-shirt? In that case, engagement might be low and we're spending money on users who are never really going to provide any value for our business. Now, on the flip side, if we're not getting enough users, we're probably not learning enough about our product um, on a day to day or a week to week basis. And so in this case, we might want to have an intervention um, to get back to a place where we're learning what we need to to find that product market fit. So let's put this into a slow, right? Our, our service level indicators are gonna be new user acquisition and activation rate. In this case, that's the percentage of users who engage with a key feature of ours in the first week of being on the platform. We will wanna look at longer term metrics, of course, over time, but this activation rate is a pretty good indicator of what those longer term metrics are gonna look like. And it's very actionable because the feedback cycle on it is very quick. So our slow would say we want to stay in the sweet spot of user growth while maintaining a minimum activation rate. And with that, we can tell our leadership, hey, if we follow this objective, we're going to hit our OKRs at the end of the year because we've aligned on those. So that gives us a few scenarios here, right? In scenarios A and B, things are all good. We're maintaining the user growth that we want, sometimes overachieving on that but the engagement rate is, is where we want it to be as well. In that case, we just wanna keep building long-term sort of value, whether that's writing docs, improving our usability, or thinking about what users want next, maybe even look at what's been really successful for us and double down in those areas. You know, In C and D, here we've got areas of interest but not engagement, so maybe we ran a promotion that brought in some low intent users, or maybe our product's not working the way we thought it would or isn't as e easy to use as we thought. In that case, we just want to slow down and assess what's going on. In scenario D, we've got the problem where engagement is good, but we're not getting to those users in the way we want. And that's where we can put that error budget or our marketing budget to work. You know, maybe we want to spend a little more money on advertising. Maybe we want to sponsor an event that we wouldn't have otherwise, but do something short term that's going to going to kind of get us those users so we can keep learning, keep figuring out what they want. Now, if none of those are working, then we really need to take a step back and reassess, get the team together, reevaluate our product strategy and our marketing messaging, and go back to the drawing board. So do slows work for growth? Yes, absolutely. They provide a flexible framework to achieve short-term and long-term goals. In an early stage startup where the focus is on learning from your users, it can be really valuable to help you get through that sort of trough of sorrow, as Andrew Chen calls it. And just remember this stuff is hard. But as long as you're, you keep learning, you keep building, I'm pretty sure you'll keep growing. I'm wishing you many, many up and to the right hockey stick charts in your future. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.